So um, in the few lectures to come, we are dealing with the Banach spaces. All right, so in the previous chapter, when we stated the Anbana theorem, so in this theorem, there's a function P, which is subadditive and uh, who possesses the property of positive homogeneity. Uh, so in this uh, chapter, uh, the space, the linear space is endowed with a, a, a norm uh, which has properties stronger than the previous function P. Uh, and uh, so when you have a norm, you have a natural distance uh, with, with that. So uh, those are um, things that you should know, but we, we are going to, to, to remind them. So again, um, I consider, um, so X is a linear space over R or C. And a norm on X is a function from X. So it, it, it's, it's non-negative, a neg non-negative function. Uh, this should be a simple uh, arrow, such that, so X, equals zero if and only if the norm of x equals zero. Uh, the norm is subadditive, and instead of positive homogeneity, you just have homogeneity, meaning that norm of ax equals norm on a on r or c times norm of x in uh, the set x. Uh, so uh, we, uh, a normed space is a linear space X with the norm, uh, with a norm, all right? So, um, yeah. So prove that uh, if I define a distance as between X and Y as norm of X minus norm of Y, this defines a distance on X. So we are going to prove that uh, G of X, Y defined by norm of X minus Y is a distance on X. So first, So if G of X, Y equals zero, uh, this by definition means that norm of X minus Y equals zero, but for, from the first property, uh, this implies that what's uh, inside the norm is zero. So X minus Y equals zero, therefore X equals Y. So the, this is the, the first property of a, a distance. Next, uh, you have also that G of X, Y is again, the same definition. I can introduce here a Z and I apply the subadi TVD. So I obtain uh, this thing, but this is nothing but G of X, Z plus G of Z, Y. And so I obtain the second property of a distance. So, uh, the last property, I, I need to prove that D of X, Y equals D of Y, X. So by definition, I have that. But, uh, well, I can multiply by minus one. And then thanks to the homogeneity of the norm, the, I can take out the minus and I find uh, G of Y, X. All right, so uh, a norm uh, defines naturally a distance and once I have uh, a distance, I have uh, topologic properties. Uh, 
so I can define open sets, closed sets, and so on, uh, so forth. So next we can say that uh, a sequence x xn converges to x if the distance between xn and x goes to zero. Uh, you have uh, that uh, a set u within x is open if for each x for each x in u you can find a ball of radius epsilon center at of course this is not capital x but uh, um, lowercase x with radius epsilon such that uh, b of x epsilon is in u i need to change uh, i need to change a little bit this sentence but but it, that, that's right Net, uh, next uh, closed set uh, so a set f is closed if is complementary in x is open and finally uh, a set k is compact if uh, for every open set i i can uh, i can recover i can can from uh, any open cover of k I can extract a finite subcover. So you you all already know that from the course of topology. It's just to remind you uh, the things. Yeah, and uh, I need also to to state that two norms. If I have two norms on X, uh, so I have two different topologies. So, but uh, sometimes they they can um, have this property. So we say that two norms, two norms, uh, norm one and norm two are equivalent if uh, if sorry if uh, there exists there exists two constants a and b positive such that uh, the following inequalities fall. All right. So, with this in mind, I propose you this second exercise. Prove that if I have two norm, two equivalent norms on X, they define the same topology. So. Uh, to prove that the two norms define the same topology, what we need to do is to prove that uh, those topologies have the same open sets. So let's um, so let's let's O be an open set in X with the norm one, and consider X within O. Uh, then, since O is an open set, there exists epsilon one such that a ball, a ball of which topology? A ball for the norm one. So there exists epsilon one such that B one of X epsilon one is a subset of O where this ball is uh, defined with the norm one. Now we want to prove that there's also a ball uh, of a radius epsilon two for uh, a given epsilon two. So, but the ball B2 is with the norm two, okay? Uh, so uh, what we need to do is it's to ensure that it's sufficient to ensure that if uh, norm two of y minus six x is less than epsilon two include implies norm of y minus x in norm one less than epsilon one. 
right? We, it's, so, it's, it's sufficient to do that uh, because uh, then uh, this condition ensures that y is in O, so uh, then it's done. Uh, but we have this inequality because uh, the two norms are equivalent. Uh, so if we choose epsilon two equal, equals epsilon one div divided by A, uh, if I, I will have that uh, this distance is less than A times this distance. And since I chose epsilon two to, to be epsilon one divided by A, I got that, so this ensures that, so if I have the distance for the norm two between y and x is less than epsilon two, I have that the distance for the norm, norm one between y and x is less than epsilon one. So uh, this condition, this uh, here, this condition now ensures that and therefore that y belongs to O. So that's it. Uh, it, it. It means that my open set O is also an open set for the norm two. Okay, so uh, now we didn't give already the definition of a Banach space. So what's, what's a Banach space is a, um, so is a normed space in which every Cauchy sequence converges within this uh, space. That's the definition. Uh, yeah, so uh, next, another uh, small exercise. So uh, assume that X with the norm one is a Banach space and assume that norm one and norm two are, are equivalent, then uh, prove that X with the norm two is also a Banach space. So we assume that X endowed with the norm one is a Banach space and you want to prove that X endowed with the norm two is also a Banach space. So what do we do? We consider a Cauchy sequence in X endowed with the norm two. Um, so we have a Cauchy sequence and we want to prove that this sequence converges in X endowed with the norm two. What we are going to use, we are going to use that um, the norm one is less than A norm times the norm two. So um, for any epsilon, I can ensure that the sequence, so I, I can ensure that the xn minus xp in norm one will be as small as I want because I have this control with the xn minus xp in the norm two. So uh, if you if you look back, go back to the definition of a Cauchy sequence, uh, you choose an epsilon and you want to prove that for n and p large enough, this norm xn minus xp1 uh, will be less than epsilon for n and p large enough. Um, but uh, this is uh, possible, but if you choose epsilon divided by a, you can find such a capital N because the sequence is Cauchy in the norm two, okay? So it follows what? It follows that xn is also Cauchy sequence in X endowed with norm one. But now um, X endowed with norm one is a Banach space. So we know that the sequence converges toward some X in the norm one. But now 
since you you have a, a control uh, in the norm two, thanks to this inequality, um, that's it. You know that also xn minus x is going to converge towards zero in norm two, which means that the sequence sequence xn converges to x in uh, the norm two, and so uh, that's it. So we have that the x is also a Banach space for the norm two. Any questions? Remarks? So if not, we, we are now going to, to provide some examples of Banach spaces that we you will um, you will see in, in the future or in different courses. So first, um, if I look at the, the, the function of the continuous, so if I look at the, the space made of the continuous functions on the interval 0, 1, real valued functions, uh, these two things, these two quantities, these two formulas define a norm. Right, uh, so we know we know uh, you know from previous courses that in fact uh, C uh, the, the 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 C this this space is Banner. Uh, there's a the typo here is is Banner for the sup sup norm. You know that it's a, it's a theorem from topology. From the course of topology. Uh, so this is complete and this is a vectorial space, so it's a Banach space. But uh, you can prove that in fact it's not complete complete for the norm two. Uh, it's not complete for norm two. In fact, uh, we know that um, that this function of continuous functions is uh, is dense. In in some other in in some other spaces. So, all right. So what what we can deduce that these two norms are not equivalent. All right. Um, another example. Now uh, we consider the the space of functions that are continuous, but also that you can derivate. And the derivative is continuous, so C1. Um, so, for example, you can approximate uh, a continuous function from, from a polynomial. This is a stone weierstrass theorem that you already saw also that you have seen in the, the course again of topology. So, which means what you can approximate any continuous function by a polynomial. So a polynomial is in C1. So, which means that uh, it's not complete because you, you, you can define uh, Cauchy sequences that will not converge. Um, so, so that will not converge in C1, but in, in C. So C1 is not, is not a Banach space. Um, yeah, next. So uh, now consider the ball in C of 0, 1. Uh, so, so this set is closed and bounded. But uh, so this is a particularity. This is a specificity 
in fact, um, B is not compact, all right? So the set is closed and bounded, but it's not compact. So um, let's discuss that. Can you find some example to prove that it's not compact? So first, um, So we have to go back to the definition of uh, of a quick continuity. So let's let's do that. Let's do that. So now we we're just um, working on this um, on the set of continuous function, a uh, real valued continuous function on the, the interval zero one. So what says Ascoli theorem? It says that if uh, in general, a set B, set B, B is compact in, so, Uh, and here I, I I put the infinite norm, the sub norm. So B is compact in in this. Um, this is a Banach space. We said that if and only if for so B is a set of functions. If for every so for every t in zero one. When I look this this number, so this this is in R. This is this has real numbers. This is a subset of R. So is compact. And And B is equicontinuous. So I, I and uh, so B is equicontinuous means that means that for all. And for all epsilon, so is here I mean zero one. So it's the continuity, but uh, it's the continuity uniformly be for all the functions in in my 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 set B. So such that if I have that x minus y less than mu, then f of x minus f y less than epsilon is the continuity, but I have here added all the F, right? So now if you look at the B, which is the, the unit ball in, in, in X. So if I look at this B, so 
So I have to look at those two conditions. So if what what is that? What is so let pick let's choose a, a, a T for a given T if I look F of T and I run F in B. Uh, all the continuous functions. So this is nothing that minus one one. You can think about that. Uh, if I run all the f on do, those b, uh, I will get that. So this is compact in R. Uh, now. Uh, um, but now it's not the second, it's not equicontinuous. So, but B is not equicontinuous. Uh, so for example, if you look at this sequence, Fn of T equals, the sine of n pi t uh, I can choose let let's say t n equals one divided by two n. So first, uh, for for any new for any new, I can choose Tn such that this is less than mu. But if you look at Fn of Tn, this is sine of n pi one divided divided by two n, and this is one. So you can see that f so Fn of zero minus Fn of Tn is one. So this, this contradicts the equi that, that B is equicontinuous. Um, so, so you choose in the definition of X equals zero and You, you have an epsilon, like say epsilon equals one half. And for, for any new that you choose, you will find uh, some, some t at or some tn such that this holds. Okay. So this contradicts the equi that, that B is equicontinuous. So B is not compact, it's closed, it's bounded. Uh, if you if you look at the details, B is closed, is bounded, but it's not compact from the from Ascoli's theorem. All right, and so we will we will show later. Uh, we'll recall later that um, in fact uh, the the compactness of the unit ball is characterizes finite dimensional normed space. So another example is the, the space defined as the sequences in R or C such that this series is finite. This is a Banach space and when you endow it with this norm, 
you have also this one. Uh, this one also, again, sequences. And then you take the limit uh, that uh, the limit is going to zero. Uh, no, th this one is the, the set of uh, sequences such that all, all the coefficients are zero uh, for n large enough. Uh, you take the norm P as defined as above. Then uh, this is a normal space, but it's not complete. So it's not a Banach space. And you can, so you can always, this is also a theorem that you, you, you already saw. You can, you can always complete a normal space that's not complete. And in this case, uh, the completion is isomorphic to LP. All right, and then uh, you can, the, the, the space X of the continuous function with compact support, you endow it with norm P. This is a normal space which is not com com complete. Uh, the completion of this space is LP. is LP. Um, LP, well, we will we'll come back to LP. Uh, so, so LP is what is the set of equivalence classes of measurable functions such that uh, this integral is finite. Uh, this is important in analysis too. We'll come back to that. So we will come back to the definition of LP. Uh, then uh, the C1 functions. So you, 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 your, your omega is in R, R to the N. So you, ha you have partial derivatives. So if you have that, and you define this norm, so you can take these derivatives. Uh, it's a normal space, but it's not complete. And the completion of that space is what we call the sum of space and that you will study in uh, various courses this year. All right. Um, So next, uh, I propose you this exercise. Wait a second. All right. So assume that A and B are, are non-negative numbers. Uh, try to prove that if when I multiply A by B, this is less than this quantity here. Okay, try to prove that. This is an exercise. Uh, 